Now, still no deal between Egypt and Ethiopia over an enormous new dam that Ethiopia has built on the Blue Nile. There had been another round of talks, but still no progress. The three countries affected are Ethiopia, Egypt and Sudan. They're all now going to brief the African Union on where they've got to, which is not to a deal. The official name for this project is the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. It has the potential to control much of the water that Egypt uses, and when it's at full tilt, it will be the largest hydroelectric plant in Africa. Ethiopia's hope is that this will provide electricity to over 65 million of its people who are currently without regular electricity. The construction is just about done. It began back in 2011, is very close to complete now. The crucial question is when to fill up the dam's reservoir and then how much water Ethiopia will guarantee it will release. And these matters are not agreed. Ethiopia has said many times it will start filling up the reservoir this month to coincide with the rainy season. That's a process that is expected to take up to seven years. But there are suggestions that Ethiopia has already begun filling the dam. This is a satellite image from the 26th of June. You can see the Blue Nile flowing right to left through the dam. This is another satellite image taken on the 12th of July, which shows water levels have risen on the right side of the dam, which is where the reservoir will be. Now, Ethiopia has denied filling it up and says the water levels are just due to heavy rains. That's something which has happened in the past, so it's not possible to be certain whether this is deliberate or not. But Ethiopia's embassy in the UK has certainly made its position clear on its Twitter account using the hashtag It's Our Dam on its profile name and the banner picture too. Well, Cameron Hudson from the Director of African Affairs in the US uh, National Security Council under President George W. Bush is now based at the Atlantic Council and joins us live. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Um, just help people coming to this story for the first time understand what are the main obstacles to a deal here? Well, principally, I think the uh, the obstacles are simply that what's going to happen in times of drought. I think that when there uh, when the rainfalls are plentiful, uh, there's not a lot of concern about uh, how quickly the dam will be filled uh, and how much water will be released through the dam downriver uh, to Sudan and to uh, to Egypt. I think the big questions surround what happens in those drought years when Ethiopia is being asked to uh, release more water, which means produce less electricity, or when Ethiopia, or rather Egypt, is uh, facing drought conditions and needs more uh, water, but Ethiopia and Sudan have become more reliant upon electricity because they have industrialized uh, those regions, which can't afford to give up that electricity. And so it's really a question of what happens in the, in the drought years. That's the biggest, I think, obstacle to overcome right now. And you helped to advise the, the Bush administration on Africa security matters. Would you qualify this story, this standoff, as a security issue now? Well, certainly both Ethiopia and Egypt have defined this as being in their national security interest. So uh, from that perspective, uh, both sides have have uh, in recent days issued some kind of saber rattling statements uh, suggesting that this was core, that this was in fact an existential threat uh, to both sides, whether on the Ethiopia side, if they could turn on the dam, uh, on the Egyptian side, whether they would be denied water. So that kind of language in, uh, in the diplomatic space mm -hmm. suggests that uh, that there are national security threats. Egypt, uh, just last month, took this issue to the UN Security Council, saying that there was a potential threat to peace and stability and security, uh, which is why it asked the UN to take this up. So, mm -hmm. so I think all sides are treating this as a potential threat to peace and security in the region. And Cameron, I've only got 30 seconds, but do you wish Donald Trump would intervene more directly to try and resolve this? Well, the Trump administration intervened at the beginning of the year. Uh, I believe that the Ethiopians thought that they came in too much on the side of Egypt, uh, which is why the negotiations have reverted back to both the UN and to the African Union. So I think all sides now are seeking uh, a more regional uh, mediation, mm -hmm. not one driven from Washington.